Next up, cinematography. So some of the stuff that you'll see here is you'll see high contrast moody lighting, which is something that was used in the... Um, in the German expressionistic style. Again, that's one of the reasons why it's influential to um, future horror films and um, uh, film noir. Very much um, something that was done that was pretty interesting are the shadow effects. We're going to watch some clips in a few minutes that talk about or that show some of that. But the shadow effects were also were very like kind of, you know, groundbreaking at the time when you're talking about cinema history um creative framing choices there's a pretty some pretty interesting creative choices that are made so again although we are just kind of looking in and observing this movie the way that it was shot there are a few interesting camera angles that were used and for 1922 these camera angles were very groundbreaking um some special techniques that they used in this movie they tinted some of the um, footage so that you could tell the difference between when it was daytime and when it was nighttime and when it was sunset, right? Back then, you couldn't shoot at night because the film wasn't sensitive enough and so everything had to be shot during the day with bright sunlight as the source. And so um, Marneau took this um, idea of tinting the film to help people differentiate between um, day and night. There's also some in-camera effects that were used as well. So one of the in-camera in effects is something called undercranking. I haven't misstated there. I'll have to correct that. It's not overcranking. It's undercranking. So um, slowing the film down when we're recording it, because they're actually cranking this camera when we're doing it. It's what the term means. Um, they're slowing down how fast we're shooting the film so that when we play it back, everything's kind of moving kind of fast. So we'll see a clip of that. And then they also use some stop motion techniques, which is actually shooting things frame by frame. And in this particular um, movie, it was to make it look like things were happening without um, human help kind of thing. So we'll look at a clip of that. Um, one of the things you'll see that's kind of different from when you go back and compare it to Slumdog Millionaire and all more modern films is number one, it has a four by three aspect ratio, which means it's pretty square and also they put a lot of framing with all their shots kind of centered so make sure you kind of look for that right that everything's kind of in the center all the time and that's kind of an old style of framing um, more modern things we use the edge of the frame a lot more when we're composing shots these days um, production design use some interesting shapes one of the clips we're going to look at will show you that um, so let's take a peek at some clips right now and um, show you kind of how this stuff was used so these first clips up um, down below here are showing the shadow effects, which again were very um, groundbreaking at the time. Um, they're very kind of powerful images that we can see. Coming up next, it's going to be a low angle shot of Count Orlock. He's on the on a ship, and we're looking up at him. That's again having a low angle shot to kind of show his dominance and power is a pretty groundbreaking thing. Here's another interesting composition where they actually are using the whole frame. It's one of the very few times where you get to see something like this in in this movie. Um, next up, we got some of the tinting. Right first, you'll see the daytime tinting. Then um, there's some sunset tinting, which is kind of orangish red. And then we have some blue tinting for all the night stuff. So take a peek at that and look for that in the film. It, let me know whether it helps you decipher what time of day it is for the movie. Um, next up, we have overcranking. And this is a horse carriage that Orlock is driving. And the horse carriage is moving like really fast. And that's because they slowed down the shooting of the film so that it will all speed up when we play it back. Um, and next up is this stop motion um, of this door opening. Okay, so that's all done frame by frame. And finally, um, this shot of Hutter making his way into the castle. And this has some of those interesting geometric geometric kind of shapes. And the way this shot was designed is it's kind of look like it kind of is meant to look like a bullseye. Like he's walking into the bullseye right under the target of uh, or into the sights of um, Orlock, uh, the vampire. So um, pretty interesting composition, very creative from a stylistic standpoint. So hopefully you like those and it gives you some sense as to what you're going to be seeing as you watch the movie. Next up, we're going to be talking about acting performance. Okay, so one of the things we want you to kind of look at is acting performance. Is it melodramatic or realistic? Okay, so melodramatic kind of means like overacting, 
Okay, because one of the challenges that the performers have to deal with, or a couple of the um, the challenges, is the fact that they have no sound, which means their voice can't be heard. So that's something that they have to overcome. Um, and they don't use a lot of close-ups, so they don't get very close to the actors' faces like we do these days. Again, we just watched Slumdog Millionaire, and the opening shot of the film is like a super, super tight shot with a lot of emotion, and you can see the sweat on the person's face. That doesn't happen in this movie, right? So the actors have to go a long way to... Um, let the audience know what they're feeling, right? So is the is the acting a little melodramatic? Looks a little bit more theater-ish? And, um, or is it realistic? So look for that. Again, all these actors were theater vaudeville actors um, making their way to, to um, cinema at the time. Talking about editing, okay? So one of the things that we want you to look at is does the pace of the editing match the scene? So when it's an intense scene, do they speed up the editing? Um, or is everything kind of the same, right? Is the pace of the movie a little bit the same? Are they using quick cuts or longer takes? I think one of the things you're going to see is that um, one of the reasons why this movie feels like it moves a little bit slower is because they do use longer takes, okay? These days, the average shot length in a movie is about 2.5 seconds. Um, and the shot length in here, you'll see shots that run 10 to 20 seconds long, which means they're, it's taking a little longer and we're seeing a little less information, right? And that's one of the reasons why it might feel like it moves a little slower. But back then, audiences weren't as sophisticated as we are. So we had to let audiences kind of sit on something and take it all in for a little bit longer. Um, but one of the things that is interesting is they do use some kind of techniques that are still used today in cinema grammar. Okay, one of the things is called the shot reverse shot. And that is showing a shot of something and then showing what they're seeing or what they're looking at. Okay, so that's something to look for and we're going to watch a clip of that. And then also cutting on action. That's actually something that's done today um, all the time. And it was something that they discovered and started doing back here in 1922. And it helps make cuts feel a little bit smoother, right? So we're going to look at that as well. So let's look at a couple clips right now. Um, first shot up, this is going to be um, shot reverse shot. So it's a shot of Hutter and then what he's looking at. Okay, and it kind of starts to build that language of how cinema works. Okay, um, right here, we're going to look at um, cutting on action. Um, sometimes it works well in this movie. If you look at this, he's taking a swig of a drink or going to gulp down a drink. And the, and the cutting on action is pretty good. But this other one, the timing of it is a little bit off. So it feels a little weird. Okay, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But at least the language was there and they were developing that um, early in the 1920s. Okay, so there's a couple clips. So let's move on to what's up next. Sound design. Now, again, usually we'll talk about sound design, um, but in this particular movie, it's a silent film, so there's not really much to um, observe. In our, in the version that you're watching, it does have a soundtrack playing with it and some sound effects, but those aren't original, right? Those are just somebody added this this in. Um, if you watch a different version of the movie, you'll hear a different soundtrack every single time, right? The original score that was made for this movie has been lost. It can't, it, it doesn't exist anymore, so we don't know what the original soundtrack was. And typically, what would happen is in a theater. While we're, the people are screening the film, there's an orchestra or a pianist or organist playing the music to the movie, right? That's typically what would happen. And I believe there's actually a theater in San Francisco, I can't remember the name of it, that actually plays silent films and has somebody playing an organ, playing a soundtrack to the movie. So it's a kind of a unique, interesting experience if you ever make your way up towards San Francisco. Um, so sound design really isn't anything that we can kind of evaluate, but, um, but it should help the movie move a little bit quicker for you. Cause again, just watching complete silence for an hour and 20 minutes is very tough. Cinematic terms from this week, mise-en-scene. So we talked a little bit about that. It's everything that makes it on the screen that makes up the mood and, and, um, visual style of our images. Um, German Expressionism, that's the type of film that we're walk watching, the, the movement that it belongs to. Um, melodramatic, so melodramatic is a little bit of overacting, okay? And that's something that you'll probably see with the actors in this particular movie. 
under cranking so this is the proper term over there it said over cranking but under cranking is when they slow down how fast they're cranking that camera so that we get a little speed up speeded up version of things to make it look a little bit um, um, otherworldly I guess um, and then cutting on action so another editing term so those are our terms for the week again I hope you really enjoy the film it's really about um, appreciating the fact that you've had a chance to look back in history and see something that was created way back at the beginning of this art form it's very rare that we get to see something like that um, in um, in an art form right you can go back and look at paintings and look at things but you really you're just you're seeing the artwork but you really don't have any insight as to how it was created right and with cinema it's a little bit different so we're seeing these moving images and you are watching something that is that was created at the very beginning of this art form. So I hope you appreciate that. Hopefully also it helps you kind of see the evolution of where we've come to in the hundred years plus of, of cinema making. Um, and that kind of gives you some insight as to uh, being able to appreciate the kind of stuff that we get to see these days. So enjoy the film. Have any questions, please reach out.